Let's talk about airspace for glider pilots. There are six letter classifications of airspace in the U.S. At first, it might seem like a bit of a hodgepodge, but let's take them one at a time and break down the logic of each in order to make it easier to understand and remember. In alphabetical order, they are also in order from most to least restrictive. Much of the requirements and restrictions are a result of the operation of aircraft under Instrument Flight Rules, or IFR. IFR aircraft can only operate under ATC control within controlled airspace. Everyone else has to live with the consequences. Most of the airspace we fly in is this controlled airspace. As such, IFR traffic can be mixed in with non-IFR traffic, including gliders. You must envision the possibility of an IFR aircraft popping out of any cloud at any time. Visibility and cloud clearance requirements are designed to allow some minimal time to see and avoid collision with these cloud-popping aircraft. It may not be enough. Gliders are hard to see. Lack of a transponder or ADS-B makes you more invisible. Generally, below 10,000 feet, we need 3 miles visibility. This is the basic VFR minimum visibility, and 2,000 feet horizontal, with 500 feet below clouds. Since most airplanes can climb faster without passenger ear discomfort than descend, the required height above the clouds is 1,000 feet, but only 500 feet below. It's often more difficult to see airplane approaching this from below also. There is a speed limit of 250 knots below 10,000 feet that we as glider pilots may at first think doesn't apply to us. After all, no glider can go that fast. However, consider that at and above 10,000 feet, those IFR aircraft could pop out of that cloud going that much faster. Many jet aircraft will accelerate to true airspeeds above 350 knots when climbing through 10,000 feet. Traffic at those altitudes also tend to have pressurized cabins and can descend rapidly without ear discomforts to the occupants. That's why we'll see the requirement for higher visibility and cloud clearance requirements at and above 10,000 feet. At 10,000 feet and above, we need more visibility and cloud clearance to get the same amount of time to avoid those faster IFR aircraft popping out of that cloud. So here, the minimum visibility increases from 3 to 5 miles, and the cloud clearance increases to 1 statute mile horizontally and 1,000 feet below. They're not climbing any faster than they did below 10,000 feet, so the minimum height above clouds remains at 1,000. Class A airspace. The simplest class of airspace is Class A. Class A exists from 18,000 feet up to roughly 60,000 feet over the continental U.S. and Alaska, but not Hawaii. It is not depicted on a chart because it is essentially everywhere above 18,000 feet. Generally, to operate in Class A airspace, an aircraft must be operating under IFR, meaning all the aircraft and pilot certification requirements. There are no visibility or cloud clearance requirements here since ATC knows where everybody is. There is one exception for glider pilots, and that is the wave window. A wave window is a prearranged block of airspace protruding into Class A airspace. These are worked out between the local operator and the local air route traffic control center and require prior coordination and permission before entering. They exist to allow gliders to do high altitude flights, such as the altitude gain required for a diamond badge, and each one specifies its own procedures, visibility, cloud clearance requirements, and strict adherence to its boundaries. An internet search for a wave window will yield lots of interesting additional information. Bottom line, never exceed 18,000 feet in a non-emergency situation without express permission. Class B airspace. Class B airspace is a block of airspace around the busiest airports. Currently, there are 37 of them. It is highly restricted and requires an ATC clearance to enter. Class B airspace is depicted on the chart with a blue outline and bold numbers indicating the altitude range that applies. Class B is often referred to as being arranged as an inverted wedding cake. Close in, Class B airspace extends upward from the ground. Farther out, it is within the altitude range to accommodate arrivals and departures at the major airport. The top of the Class B airspace is usually around 10,000 feet above the ground, sometimes higher, like this example in Atlanta, which goes up to 12.5. To operate within Class B requires at least a private pilot certificate or a specific instructor's endorsement within the preceding 90 days. The aircraft must be equipped with a two-way radio, transponder, and ADS-B out to enter Class B airspace. 
A clearance is required prior to entering, and the granting of that clearance is not assured. ATC may well respond with, remain clear of the Bravo airspace. Because of this, ATC knows about every aircraft in Class B airspace, so we don't have to worry about another aircraft unexpectedly popping out of a cloud. As a result, the visibility requirement remains the basic three miles, but the cloud clearance is simply clear of clouds. Now attached to each Class B airspace is a 30 nautical mile circle indicated in red that extends up to 10,000 feet MSL, known to most as the Mode C Veil. Most aircraft require a transponder with Mode C altitude reporting and ADSB out to operate in this area. But the good news is the gliders and some other aircraft are exempt when operating below the ceiling of the associated Class B within the Mode C Veil. However, be aware that jet arrivals usually operate below 10,000 feet within the Mode C Veil, presenting a hazard within that area. Class C airspace. Class C airspace is established around moderately busy tower-controlled airports. It too is an inverted wedding cake configuration, though its top is lower than Class B, usually about four to 5,000 feet above the ground. It's depicted in red with bold numbers indicating the altitude range. There's usually a five mile radius circle that starts at the surface and a 10 mile radius that is usually circular, but not always. There is an additional 20 mile radius where ATC would like you to call them but it's not required. This area is not drawn on the chart other than a box indicating the frequency and to call within 20 miles. In Class C, ATC provides radar vectoring and traffic sequencing services. While radio contact is required prior to entering, a clearance to enter is not. Because ATC doesn't exercise complete control over aircraft flight paths, standard VFR visibility and cloud clearance requirements apply. Thus, three miles visibility, 2,000 feet horizontal, 500 below, and 1,000 above. Class D airspace. Class D airspace is the airport traffic area around almost all tower controlled airports. When not already part of Class B or C, it's depicted as a blue dashed circle, the same color as the blue tower controlled airport symbol. Class D usually has a radius of 5 miles and up to 2,500 feet AGL though that can vary, and there are, may also be extensions to allow for instrument approaches. You'll see those aligned with the runway. The actual top of the Class D airspace is shown in blue brackets. Radio contact is required to enter Class D airspace, just like C, but unlike Class C, a transponder or ADSB is not. Like all tower-controlled airports, a clearance is required to land and take off. Like Class C, the standard visibility and cloud clearance requirements apply. Class E airspace. Class E is your basic vanilla controlled airspace that covers the entire U.S. from 14,500 feet up to the overlying Class A. Now that's the easy part. It also encompasses most airspace below that as well. And determining the bottom of Class E airspace explains many of the lines and colors on the sectional chart. The basic VFR cloud clearance requirements apply here and increase at 10,000 feet and above as we've discussed earlier. Gliders have no communication or equipment requirements in most Class E airspace. The boundaries of different floor heights of Class E airspace are depicted in the chart with blue and magenta shading and some dash lines. Where the magenta color fades into the area, the floor is 700 feet above the ground and typically covers the area surrounding airports. Outside of that, the floor is 1,200 feet above the ground, unless marked as Class G. Where blue fades into the area, the floor is 1,200 feet AGL, unless marked otherwise. It's also where it abuts Class G. We'll get into Class G in a moment. Here's an interesting snippet from southeastern Alaska that illustrates these principles. Inside the magenta circle, the floor of Class E airspace is 700 feet, and it butts up against G airspace to the north. Inside the blue area, the floor is as noted at 2200 feet AGL. Now Class E can extend to the ground around some non-tower airports. That's depicted as a dashed magenta area. Any floor other than these will show blue numbers and may be further differentiated with a link-like symbol in to indicate the floor in either above ground or above sea level. Class G airspace. 
Class G, or uncontrolled airspace, has no IFR traffic controlled by ATC operating in it, but it actually can have IFR traffic operating in it without ATC. As a result, cloud clearance requirements apply in Class G airspace above 1,200 feet above the ground and are the same as in Classes C, D, and E. The visibility requirement is simply 1 mile below 10,000 feet and 5 miles at and above 10,000 feet. There are higher values for night, but since most gliders can operate at night, we'll skip that. Class G is depicted on the chart between the surface and 14,500 feet. Remember, Class E starts everywhere at and above 14,500 on the sharp side of the blue shaded line, or on the sharp side of magenta line if it says Class G there. That's pretty rare, though. What happened to Class F? Well, there is no Class F in the U.S. Now let's talk about transponder and ADS-B out requirements. Now most aircraft are required to have transponders and ADS-B out equipment to fly above 10,000 feet and into Class A, B, and C airspace, and above Class B and C airspace as well. Gliders are exempt from the 10,000 foot and up requirement, but must have a transponder with ADS-B out to operate in Class B, C, and any area above them up to 10,000 feet. Now, some Class B extend above 10,000 feet, like this one in Atlanta that goes to 12.5, so there the exemption only applies above that altitude. I hope this video has helped you understand the logic behind the airspace designations and their visibility and cloud clearance requirements, and as a result, remember them better. Safe soaring, and thanks for watching.